In this presentation, we will add capital expenditures using bank feeds. In other words, there are going to be purchases for capital expenditures or property, plant, and equipment, PP and E, that we're going to record with the use of bank feeds, adding that information into our financial statements. Here we go with zero. Here we are in our Triple G dashboard. We're going to start off by opening up our financial statements. We're going to go to the accounting drop down and go on down to the balance sheet first. We'll be opening up the balance sheet. When that opens up, we're going to duplicate the tab by going to the tab up top, right clicking on that tab, duplicating that tab. We're going to do the same thing for the income statement. Go into the tab to the left, opening up the income statement by going to the accounting drop down and then going on down to the income statement. When the income statement then opens, we're going to go to the tab up top, right click on that tab up top and duplicate it once again. Let's go on back to the balance sheet, which is on the tab to the right this time, and we will be updating the date. So I'm going to select a date so we can update it. And then we're going to go up to March. We want to be up in March this time. I'm going to pick the right date this time as we start off and update that report. And this is all we've constructed so far is that one transaction. Go into the income statement and we're going to check out that's all we have in the income statement thus far. Now we're going to go to the first tab, go back to the dashboard. We're going to go into our banking information, which can be found on the dashboard by going to the checking area down below. Or you can go to the account drop accounting drop down up top and go to the bank accounts, which is what we'll do here. Accounting and then the bank accounts. And then we have these 12 transactions that we need to reconcile. So we're going to be reconciling these 12 transactions which means we're basically going to be adding in our case uh, transactions to the books uh, from the bank feeds so we've got this information on the bank feed side of things we're on the reconciling tab we're on the bank feed side of things and this is the information on the book side of things we're going to go in and pick and choose what we want to be adding at this time this one we want to add office depot down here so office depot has 16,000. Now, Office Depot is one of those vendors which is a little bit confusing because it might not be a repetitive thing. We might buy multiple things from Office Depot. For example, we might buy office supplies, which we would put in office supplies expense. Or if we purchase something that's like large, like equipment or you know furniture in this case, then we, we would put it into a different account. So we can't, it, it's difficult to make the bank rule that way. We could do that and we will like think of options in the future, meaning we, we might say if it's over a certain dollar amount, put it in a different account or at least tell us about it maybe. And if it's under a certain dollar amount, maybe just put it into office supplies. We could do something like that. Uh, but for right now, we're just going to add this as we go. So I'm going to add this as we go. We're going to go to the right. I'm not going to make a rule for it. I'm just going to simply go down and, and add this. Now we can add this in the quick add here, which would basically be who's it from, Office Depot, and what, the account number, the account, and that's it. That's basically all the detail you need. You can have a description, basically, we, pur we purchase office equipment or furniture. Uh, or you can go to the more detail down below and we can have more, more detail so we can see this. Again, oftentimes you could just basically copy the description up top as the vendor. So this description oftentimes can be copied as the vendor. Uh, so I'm just going to say, let's take that, copy it, bring it down here, and that'll be uh, who it's going to. Uh, you don't want to set up multiple vendors. So so if you know if there's a one spelling error that's off, you want to make sure that you're picking up one vendor so you don't have like a whole bunch of different vendors or contacts. Then I'm going to pick up the date. It's, it's picking up the date that came from the bank feed. Remember, this isn't necessarily the date. If we wrote a check here, it could be really different that when we wrote the check as to when it cleared the bank. If it's an electronic transfer, it'll, it'll be pretty close. But we're waiting until it hits the bank. So that means that's just the way we're doing it. We're lagging until it clears the bank. We don't really know about it. That's kind of the system we're using. There's pros and cons to that, but that's what it is. So we're going to be saying, all right, that's when it cleared the bank. That's going to be the date. Item, there's no item because this is not an inventory item. The description is just Office Depot. That's fine. Uh, we might want to put in the, de in the description what we purchased, office furniture or something like that and give a more description on what we got. And then the price is gonna be the 16,000. Now the account, not gonna be going to an expense this time because we purchased a large item and for, for taxes as far as, and bookkeeping, even if you're on a cash basis and we paid cash for it as we did here, you gotta put it on the books as an asset typically and then depreciate it. So that's gonna be the difference here. We need to put it on the books as an asset instead of an expense account. So I'm going to go back up top and I'm going to say, all right, let's look for an asset. Do we have, these are the type of assets over here. We're looking for like uh, computer and office equipment. That might work. I could make another one called um, 
uh, furniture and fixture possibly and maybe we can do that I'll set that up just to practice it so this is account 1520 I'm gonna set up an account to 1525 uh, let's say 1525 so I'll go back up top I'm gonna to add an account and I'm gonna say 1525 and this is gonna be the account type is gonna be an asset account. So it's an asset account and it's gonna be a uh, fixed asset. We wanted a fixed asset, that's depreciable assets, property, plants, and equipment, all kind of the same, different names for the same thing. And then we're gonna put this into a furniture and fixtures account. So there it is. Scrolling on down, we're gonna save that. And there's our details. So then, then once I save this transaction, it'll record it on our side, right? So I'm gonna save the transaction. And at that point in time, now we have the transaction on our side. So even if I don't reconcile, it's there, but it's not reconciled now. So if I go to the balance sheet, and if I was to update the balance sheet, even though I haven't reconciled it, I say update. And I'm gonna see, all right, let's go down. Now we have the furniture and fixtures here has been added. So if I go into the furniture and fixtures and check that out, we're gonna zoom into it and see what uh, what's being constructed as we add these from the, uh, from the bank feeds. There it is. Notice it's using a spend money form. We didn't actually go into the spend money form. We created basically that, that one form that's gonna be the default kind of form as we entered the information but it's still a spend money form so it's going to go basically back to that form because that's the form we always typically use when money is going out going back uh, to the prior screen back to the balance sheet the other side is going to be in the checking account now notice the checking accounts in the liability section why because it's overdrawn which means you know it's got a negative balance in it and it will until we enter the beginning balance which we'll talk about doing later. And that's gonna be a, another common issue that people have with bank fees. We're only entering the data right now and we, we enter the data before we have the beginning balance. So we're gonna to have to add the at the beginning balance. So it won't be a problem. We'll show you how to do that at a later time. But until that happens, we're gonna have the negative account in uh, the, the checking account. If we go into it then, of course, we will find that transaction once again down here, which is going to be the decrease of the, uh, 16,000. So then I'm going to go back, back over, and there there we have it. Now in the income statement, no effect on the income statement from this transaction because we put it on the books as an as an asset. When will the income statement be affected? When we depreciate it. So when we depreciate it, then we'll expense it in the form of depreciation. That's how it works with, you know, these bigger assets. If we go back over here to the first tab and take a look at the bank uh, statements, the bank statement still includes the, the 13 items and only the one re reconciled. We haven't reconciled the, the equipment yet one. This one's not reconciled yet. If I go back to the account transactions, then we do have the account transaction over here, but it's again, not reconciled. Now let's reconcile it. So we're gonna go back to the first tab and I'm gonna go back down and we're gonna reconcile it. Now, because we didn't make a bank rule about it, Next time, if this happens again, we're going to have to we're going to have to do the same thing. We'll set up an account and we'll do the same thing for it. And we're going to do those for those types of items where we can't really set up a rule. We need to kind of check it each time. Uh, and so and so we'll talk more about rules that might be more appropriate when we have those kind of those kind of areas that we're not totally sure about. Uh, and so we'll talk about that later. But for now, we're going to go ahead and say, OK, now it's been reconciled. So what does that do? That means on the on the bank statement over here, if I go to the second tab, you're gonna see it's gonna be uh, reconciled now for that uh, 16,000. And if we go to the account transaction, uh, it has been reconciled. Now, these two is what we're making. This is what we're making now from the bank statement. Now, I think that this, this term reconcile is a, is a little bit confusing. People think that this is actually what it means to to have a bank reconciliation. This is the process of us making a bank reconciliation. And we'll talk about the bank reconciliation report that we still need to process. We still should be looking at the bank reconciliation report that will be created as we kind of reconcile this information. So in other words, you couldn't really print this off screen out and say, hey, this is the reconciliation report. We still need to go into the bank reconciliation report. And if you're looking into like, how do you do a bank reconciliation? Then this is kind of the process of us doing it as we go. 
However, this isn't really the bank reconciliation. So we'll actually look at the at the report and see how this ties into the doing of uh, the bank reconciliation report. As we do these bank feeds and as we can kind of check them off as we go, that's a nice feature to help us out with the reconciliation process. But we should still be looking at the actual, you know, bank reconciliation. So in any case, we'll talk about that in a future presentation. That's it for now. Let's get out of here.